My father used to say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Till the accident. <laughs> Feminists say, and you may agree with this, you may not. Feminists say, a woman's work is never done. Maybe. If they got themselves organised, it'll be better. <laughs> it's a bit of an icy stare you give me there, madam. <laughs> what you've got to understand is that's postmodern misogyny. That joke is, in fact, steeped in irony. So don't you worry your pretty little head about it, love. <laughs> I had one of those serious relationship conversations the other week with my girlfriend where she sat me down and talked at me for about six hours. <laughs> I hadn't realised until then that when a man says he is spoken for, that is quite literally what he means. <laughs> she said to me, she said, Jimmy, we're at a crossroads in our relationship. Down one road is hard work and commitment, but ultimately, happiness. And down the other road, well, the other road is a dead end. And I said, that's not a crossroads, that's a T-junction. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you laughed. She went fucking mental. <laughs> I should, I suppose, point out at this early stage in the, uh, in the show that uh, despite my dress and general demeanour, I'm not gay. <laughs> Unless you're from Newcastle. And by gay, you mean owns a coat. <laughs> you're looking a bit disappointed there. Huh? Sorry, it's just homosexuality isn't my thing. No hard feelings. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't want to spoil the mood. I'm not, you know, I'm not homophobic. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> it's fine, you know, obviously some, some people are straight, some people are gay. That is fine. I'm what you might call a stray. I'm straight, but I'm socially gay. It means I'll notice when a female friend changes her hair or buys new shoes, but I won't accept your cock in my ass. <laughs> It's less of a joke, it's just something I wanted to make absolutely clear. <laughs> I get the feeling from that look on your face that I may have misjudged this situation. You, you either look hard or gay. Hopefully not both. <laughs> you look as if you want to take me outside. I'm not entirely sure why. I suppose either way I'm buggered. <laughs> as I'm sure you all would have ascertained, I'm quite middle class. And I'm from the home counties. So I don't have an accent. This is just how things sound when they're pronounced properly. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with being working class these days. <laughs> being working class is very much like masturbation. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, it's nothing to be proud of either. <laughs> and both give you calluses on your hands. <laughs> Sting, the popular singer, Sting's often bragging about his eight-hour night sex sessions with his wife, Trudy. Imagine how long he'd be able to keep it up if she was a looker. In Japan, they believe that tiger penis improves fertility. But I think, if you really want to get pregnant, you're best off using a man's cock. <laughs> My best mate's girlfriend is six months pregnant. They said, you want to feel the baby? <laughs> on reflection, I think they meant on the outside. <laughs> they say travel broadens the mind. Except with Americans or tends to widen the arse. <laughs> a lot of people quote the fact that only 10% of Americans have passports. The thing is, they say it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, I've got nothing against Americans. Just one came up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago and said he thought I was patronising. <laughs> I said, well, I think you'll find that's pronounced patronising. <laughs> it means when you talk down to someone. Don't worry, I'm not being condescending. I'm far too busy thinking about important things you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Did you know you're ten times more likely to get mugged in London than you are in New York City? It's because you don't live in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> See, my favourite news story of the last year came from America. I'm sure you all saw this story in the papers or on TV. It was a story about a man in Utah, an American man, who were, he was out rambling in the wilds of Utah, the beautiful desert landscape, and there was a rock fall, and he got his hand trapped underneath a massive boulder, and he had to sever his own hand in order to walk to freedom. Incredible story about human courage and spirit. Did you all see that story? 
Well, I can't believe anyone saw it and didn't ask themselves a question because I think it does beg the question, would I be able to do that? I've given it quite a lot of thought and I think, yes, yes, I would be able to do that. What do I care about an American's hand? <laughs> if it's life or death, I'll cut his fucking head off. 